not too tilted up and down and not not turned at all and everything's slightly turned or a little bit tilted and even this one was um, tilted so I actually just used my um, photo editing and tilted her back <laughs> so I tilted her back so she's straight that's what I wanted and I also wanted um, uh, I wanted to do a girl this time like I did done boys well, I did men. Well, I did a couple of men the last couple of times. I'm doing a female. And so I'm just going to take that onto there using this red and some thin viscosity medium that I've decanted into a jar. And I'm using thin medium. I could use water, but medium dries really, really hard. Um, this medium does. It's This thin medium, it's not the same kind of... Um, Thing as flow that I was using the other day I was using flow no it wasn't flow it was open medium and open medium um, keeps the paint wet and this thin medium will dry in the same drying time as what water dries so I want it to dry quickly um, but the reason why I'm not using water is because water thins out the paint so much that the pigment is separate and can you imagine like um, you know, getting a bit of tomato sauce or um, a bit of egg yolk, mixing it with a bit of water and sticking it on your wall um, and it dries um, and then, you know, you could come along in a couple of days or a week and wipe it off quite easily with a sponge. And that's what happens when you thin out paint with water. It's, um, it doesn't bind, it doesn't stick to the surface like it would with a medium that has binder in it. So. When you thin it with the medium, um, it's like thinning it with clear, thin paint. It dries super hard and super fast and it sticks to the surface and you can't get it off. So, so I'm just putting a couple of marks. I want chin down here somewhere and top of the head up here. Like I mean the top of the head is in the top of the hair up there. So I need another brush. So just making a couple of marks see that's not dry yet so I can and I'm wanting to work with a loose paint at first I'm wanting some drips um, yeah so, so I'm, I'm good with the drips I've also got this um, sort of it's just a square chisely sort of short bristled brush that I can really scrub with um, it takes a beating this one so it's pretty good so if that's the top of my head and that's my chin, a face front on like that is kind of an egg shape. So I'm going to do an egg shape. It's kind of an egg shape. So faces are, all faces have the same kinds of proportions. Um, human faces do, that is. So you have an egg shape, it's wider at the top. You know, this, if I was to do the Loomis method again, oh no, drips. I can wipe them off, don't worry. <laughs> if I was to do the Loomis method, that circle would be in here and land under the nose somewhere. I like drips. I'm gonna make some more now. Drips. Um, <laughs> um, but I'm not, so, so with this one, here's my egg shape. Right, I've got these egg shape, and some faces are more round, some faces are more oval, some faces have wider jaws, but that's I, I can get to that later. But here, what I'm looking for is the halfway point between the top of the head, which is right up there on the top, top of the head above the hairline, and there the halfway point that's roughly where the eyes sit. So the eyes are on this line here. So then, <laughs> you're reporting me for drips. Oh no, no. <laughs> Alright, I'll try not to do too many drips. Or I'll make them nice drips. So if I put the hairline in here, right? So there's the hairline's going to be about there. And then if I divide from the hairline down to the bottom of the chin into thirds, third there, third there, third there. 
that gives me the hairline this gives me the brow line as in where the eyebrows are where the nose is and there's the chin the bottom of the nose that is I'm in the bottom of the nose under here so this is she's looking straight forward so I'll put a line down the center of the face I'll just soften that a bit and make a few extra drips now the ears are interesting so they go between the brow and the bottom of the nose they sit there top of the ear comes to the brow this one's just uh, <clears throat> the other method where I did the round circle that's called the Loomis method but this is just the proportions of the face really I don't know if it's got a method name but it's the proportions of the face and so um, and all faces are the same kind of portion so this one between the nose and bottom of the mouth that line in between the mouth sits one third down so it sits there it sits kind of higher than what you think and then the chin's down there now if I tilt up the ears dip, drop down so if I tilt up a little bit it's hard to tell on a photograph but I extend my neck and my ears drop down so I know the head's tilted up or like if I tilt down and shorten the neck from the front view the ears go up a bit so she her ears are a little bit lower than her nose you see the bottom of the ears are a little bit lower than under her nose so she's she's lifted her chin up which is what people do to make um, so they don't get wrinkles so her ears are kind of here somewhere the ears sit here they're quite low so that gives me the proportions of the face, which means the nose is under here. So now I can block out um, some of the shadow shapes to um, get me the form. So, so before I even think about doing this detail, I just want to block out, I, should, I could go up, up a brush size actually, but um, eyes are, usually an eye width apart so between the eyes there's an eye width as well around about an eye width and then an eye width from there to the side of the head as well so that's where the eyes go so I always do this line in the middle of the mouth before I put the lips on and that one underneath there like that that's the shadow under the bottom lip so that goes there we've got some shadow around here I'm just mapping in the shadow to give me a bit of um, form using my medium because I want, I actually want drips. I want, I want drips. I want them. So I can put the hair in in a minute. So once I've established where the eyes and things are and the ears, I can sort of chisel out the shape of the face so she's got a pretty square jaw oh no now that's this side hasn't but this is dried and that's the beautiful thing about this medium it dries pretty quick so I'm screwed as far as wiping that off goes but I've got my gesso paint which is white finder paint and it's the same surface that's on here so when I'm Put that back in um, over the top I can it can look a bit like it's the white of the um, canvas poking through so I'm going to do that to square out her jaw with a clean brush clean brush um, and that's really dry so I can dry that water off take some of this gesso and I will just put it over the top to wipe that's like using a rubber I reckon take off that color there and I can square out her jaw there yep now so the eyes are here she's looking up which means the eyes are a little down so now I am going to put in a little bit of detail so then here. so if I take the edge of the nose like the that bit what's that bit called the 
side of the nose. I don't need to put white paint on them because that's still wet. And line that up. It should line up with the tear duct part of the eye. So I can, if that's, oh yeah, I can still take the paint out. Now if, it's, if I keep it dry, I can see I can wipe the shape of the white of the eye out instead of putting it in. That's what I kind of want to do. But I can't do it there because that's dry. Oh, no, I can. I can. Like that. So I'll take a bit more of this red paint. Put it in here. For that bit. Just to give me a sense of and her brow like that so that's all so that's kind of one eye coming in a bit like that two ducting now the other eye so i'm going to line that same way up with this side of the nose which is a lot darker this side um, take it over this way and we've got the that pupil slightly higher because I I did tilt this back but I'll, um, I just wanted a straight on head for this particular one today good one to start with too is a straight on face rather than a turned portrait which is a quite a bit harder to negotiate um, especially when you're learning too so so that's pretty dark up under there. I'm just gonna think like this and there's some shadow on here on her face and that too so I'll wipe out the white of the eye on if I can yeah good wipe out that bit um, and I also might might get a smaller little chisely kind of brush Smaller chiselly kind of brush, one that um well, is it? I quite like these little they're a little hard. So that's a little pointy one, so that's okay. I'll take medium on it instead of water and just wipe out some of the highlight areas while it's I can, while I still can. Like that bit. And give it a bit of form. And that bit down there. This is a beautiful, I love this way of painting with acrylic paint. It works also with oil paint. Um, with oil paint, the paint doesn't dry as quick. So you can manipulate it around a bit. But I love the acrylic because it does dry quick. And then when it's dry, I can just paint over it if I want to use something um, like um, like with um, oil if I want to, um, with some colour or with white to make my corrections. So that's what I like doing. Now, are those eyes even is the question. So I'll just... That's dry down the middle of the nose. Oof. Do I need to zoom in, I wonder? Um, you for it really. I wonder if I should, no. Hi there, who's that? Jaya Bride Fine Art. Hello Jaya Bride Fine Art. How are you today? I'm doing a little tonal study in acrylics. And um, uh, it's fun. It is a very fun thing to do and um, it dries nice and quickly so I can, can, I can um, build this up a little bit as I go. So I'm going to put, I'll check that my nose isn't too long, it might be a bit long. Uh, so how can I check that? I can check it just by looking I suppose. So I'll move that up and I'll move. I'll move the nostrils up a bit, which means I need to also move the shadows up and move the mouth up. That's okay, I'll move that up. Okay, and then 
Oh, I might have moved it up too far, but these are the things we will figure out as we go, I suppose. What's that bit out there? Sweet. Okay. That's a bit better. Right. Better. So now, now that I've got that up there, I can put some softer tones under that nose there. And I'll, um, this whole side is kind of in the shadow, so I'm just going to fill that in a bit, I reckon, before I get darker with my um, detail. Chisel out that square of there, comes up here. And I love this scratchy kind of a brush. I love it. So I just, that's kind of the way I like to paint. Um, maybe because, um, I don't know, a bit lazy of me maybe. I'll watch that. And I'll watch my edges too. So. Watch that. Now I'm just wondering if I need to make some corrections yet. Probably not. I'm probably okay. Still at the moment. I can still make some corrections with water. The top of that nose is really dry. So I might do that. So I'm going to come in with my gesso again. So I'm using gesso to make corrections because it matches the colour of the canvas I've got. So I can use gesso rather than white to do that when it's dry. There. Now. Um. Okay, so there's partly it's coming along it's amazing how quickly it comes together yeah yeah well, yeah i like painting really fast it is pretty fast work this i mean i've only got one color so working with one color um takes away a lot of things to think about you know so um that might be part why it comes together so quickly i think um could be and just one brush, you know, and yeah, the one colour. Do the, the top not happening up there. So I'm just going to put that. Now I've gone up too high there with the hair. Oh. So should I chisel that out now? I might, I might actually. I might take my wire into that and chisel it out now. So that I, um, don't get too wide. And while that's, so that means her, this comes in a bit. I've got some hair down there. Yes, it comes together pretty quick. Pretty quick. So I'm still kind of looking for nice marks now um, and things like that and getting the, the shape of the head right now, the, the length of this up here, some of those softer tones in through there, the width of that part right and then the ear, now that's Pretty much dry. Oh, it's just coming off. It's really dry there now, so I'm going to have to use some gesso on it. Which is fine. I'm going to get all the colour off. I need a fresh rag. Fresh rag, and I shall put the ear in a bit closer. 
with my gesso. Like that, which means that one's dark on that side. How am I going? A little bit in there. Nice big sort of brush marks. I like messy kind of brush marks. Mm. So, I'll go back to the eyes and kind of put in some more detail here now. I'm still using this brush. I haven't really changed from all my main work. Um, yeah. Use my finger a bit too. Okay, a little kind of. Um, okay. Can you get bits that are too heavy or so it goes that way that way that way that way we've got where is that line up and look where the inside of that ear lines up line comes down that way here sort of like that hmm do I want to keep that drip there? No, probably not. Probably not. I'll use this little chisel brush again. And I'll chisel out. Must have been a bit of black on that. Where did I get that from? Don't know. Okay, so while I'm here, I'll just tweak that. And with people you don't know in portraits, um, you don't have to uh, paint them, you know, exactly the same because you don't know them, and so you can you can afford to be a little bit more liberal with marks and things and let them happen a bit more naturally. If it, if you're painting someone you know or someone that you know has to look like that person. Even every little mark counts, so you've got to be really careful how you put the thing together to, because even a little line can change the way a face looks or appears. Um, so yeah, that's kind of really important to think about. So I always think, you know, when you're starting with portraits, it's a good idea to um, just paint some random person that you don't know. <laughs> you're not worried about, or yourself, actually. It's good painting yourself because you also don't care too much about that. You can afford to um, be a little bit more um, kind of creative with how you put the thing together. Well, that's what I think a lot of artists do do self-portraits is to um, because they don't have that worry of making it not look like the person. If you know, No one's going to come and say, oh I don't like it, I look ugly or change that, which happens all the time. Because actually paint is more ugly like it's more brutal when you paint a person you know skin so smooth and um, delicate and the tones are so subtle and when you get heavy tones you get a brutal effects that um, can really age age a person or so um, quite quite um, difficult to to be kind in a painting unless you really lie I mean you do lie you lie it's all right to lie to to you know put in things that aren't really how it is for aesthetic, to be aesthetic, 
aesthetically pleasing. So I shouldn't be mixing the pink with white if I can help it. I don't want to mix the pink with white. If I can help it. Now, um, all right, I'll put some, okay, put in some of here like this, around the lips a bit, darken in the middle. I might have to go to my little brush, little brush here. Put in a bit of detail now. Some more detail here. Put that down there like that. This one here and here. Hmm. And now smooth that out there a bit. Take a bit of I think I need I think I need a well no I'll use this I'm using a stiff brush because I like it. I'll take a bit of paint out there. Just correct this shadow under here and it goes in pretty dark down the side here so I'm using this one, the bigger one now, to get to go a bit darker down here where the shadows are darker which goes up into there and into the eye and there here and I'm gonna use this other chis chisely brush now to take away some paint where I need to like um take it away here so down the side of the face here and uh, here here and which means I've got to lift up the other side of the face, don't I? That hair under the ear, I'm too wide here. So there's some hair that comes under here and kind of fans out there a bit. Might have overdone that. <laughs> oh, whoops, but that's okay. I uh, will actually wipe some of that back. So, which will cause some drips, maybe. I can always get rid of them. What is it with the drips? Do you reckon it just. <gasps> but I like them. I, I actually quite like drips, though. Are you staying with the restricted color palette? Yeah, for this one I am. Well, for the for today, and then when it dries, I'm gonna let it dry, and then I'm gonna um maybe tomorrow I will or the next day I'm gonna glaze over it or one of the other ones, which means I'm gonna add color over the top in parts to kind of create. I'm not sure. I have this idea, but um I've got to give I've got to try it. I'm going to try something so um yes today yes and then i'll tweak it i'll add color but it's going to be really dry and i'm gonna go over it in oils and this is acrylics so um so it's gonna be interesting i think We'll see anyway, it might, might not be. <laughs> the drip thing is from the art school, every bloody painter drawing student. Is that when you went to art school, everyone was dripping? I wonder why, like, drove you crazy. I wonder why. Maybe because it distracts from the... I think it can't be the main focus. Like you want to, or it's a real watercolour sort of technique, isn't it, too? I'll try not to do it. Yeah, the drip was on everything. Mm. I don't know, it must have been, maybe it's that postmodern kind of thing. I wonder if they were doing it in oils, too. But I don't like too much of it, like, 
It's got to be done quite well, I think. But, you know, I don't know. Hello, this is looking great so far. Thank you. Hello, Maddie Creates. How are you? Um, thanks very much. Just thought I'd do a front-on portrait today. And it took me ages to find a suitable image because um, just to get the, the right kind of shadow on it and to get something without pout and without too much makeup or, you know, with a tilt or a turn of the head. I know we used your smoke screen. Yeah, I've, um, yeah. So to, um, drips to kind of create, um, diversion from, yeah, maybe, maybe. Uh, like you could, you can really definitely overdo the drips. That's, so I'm gonna actually, I will take some of them away, don't worry. <laughs> I will, I promise. No, I will. Um, she's got this fluffy hair, so I wanna, so I've gotta kinda, oh yeah, we don't want that. Too. We don't want that. All right, gotta let that be dry. We are going to go back into the eyes again. Back into the eyes. Hello, hello, hello. So I'm just using Brilliant Magenta today. And then when this dries, I'm going to, on either this one or one of the other portraits I did, I'm going to go over it with oils in parts and sort of to create um, um, something. Not entirely sure what yet, but I have an idea. So I'm not sure if it will work or not until I try it. Um, so that's the plan. I always have a bit of a plan. Uh, yeah. So if I take that down there like that, is that a little too low? Whoops. What am I using? So I'm using Matisse acrylic. This color is magenta quin violet. So series three. And it's um, transparent. So see these paints have got um, that white square on it. That means it's a transparent paint. You know, I've been using acrylics for underpainting, but I find my first layer of oils just doesn't bite as good as it does on gesso canvas. I may try just going straight into oils next time. Yeah, um, did you know you can get coloured gesso? So I'm actually using white, the white I'm using on this underpainting is gesso and I'm just using an acrylic paint and a thin medium. So um, if you, are you thinning your paints with water? That's one thing and then um, maybe use, use coloured gesso uh, too because that, that's still got the tooth or you can prop you can even add a little bit of chalk into your um acrylic paint to give it a little bit of tooth because it's the tooth that oil seems to do you find you ever find that oil seems a bit slick on acrylic sometimes yeah it depends how depends how smooth it well yeah um that's what i'm going to find out when i go over this too because I, I usually I often start with acrylics and want to keep going with acrylics and not swap. So um, I haven't done enough to be really confident with um, everything that it might do. But um, I think it probably depends on... Because acrylics can dry a little bit glossy too. And so, um, yeah, it could be that or maybe you don't want to glaze with it you just want to use straight oil paint maybe but 
yeah it's it's supposed to be able to go over it in theory so that's why i think i've got to i've got to have a go myself and play with it a bit i think so i can um so i can answer that kind of question um but i like like i'm a bit of an acrylic painter myself i do like acrylics um yeah so but i'm learning oils and i'm beginning to like them but i find that if i start with acrylics yeah i just want to kind of keep going with acrylics because i know what, exactly what they're going to do and i'm not really sure what oil to do some of the time um with like that yeah straight do you use a medium like um i use i'm using a thin viscosity medium with this one so it's um thin like water it's as thin as water almost and you can add a little bit more water and it dries really quick so it's not a retarder um it doesn't um keep the paint open and wet um, for very long so it dries as fast as water does and I I like that with acrylics because I quite like that it dries so I can go over it and work in layers um, rather than um, um, put more paint into the wet paint and work wet on wet so I don't like to work wet on wet with acrylics yeah oh so retarder for your acrylics yeah it's that's sticky stuff it's funny stuff um yeah i wonder if that's if that kind of does something to it because it changes the consistency of the acrylic paint i reckon so maybe maybe it's that maybe it's the retarder that um make isn't great with oils Be interesting seeing because it stays open for so long so like um, you can reconstitute it um, you know for, for after several hours so you might have to wait for a few days for it to dry before you go over it with oils maybe I wonder if that's why I should so this one's not a retarder it's um just straight it dries like water at that time pretty um uh, now what have i done here i think i need to go up i think i need to and then again so link oh liquid oh yeah okay yeah uh i just use with my oils the medium i use so we've got this art spectrum lean medium so that oh sorry lean medium just lean medium one and i've also got um a clear gel a couple of gel mediums that are a little bit glossy one's a satin one's a gloss um so that's what i use tend to use with my oils Animals. I'll do an animal painting scene on this. On this, um, on my one thing too. On, on Twitch. Yeah. Oh. What sort of animal should I do? Yeah, I like animal stuff. I like animals. I like birds. I paint a lot of birds. Um, cats and dogs and things like domesticated animals. I like domestic animals. Um, I like, uh, what else do I like, um, kind of painting a blue heron, yeah, yeah, herons are pretty lovely, wild cats and birds, yeah, yeah, I like, um, dim like, animals that live in the cities, like, animals that have adapted, like, sparrows and, um, uh, kind of, um, 
foxes and um, things like that. Those kind of birds. So I think I think that juxtaposition of um, bird and you know human habitat is interesting. I reckon. Um, but I do love. Yeah, I paint a few Australian animals, but I love. I love also. I just love it. all animals, really. I think they're amazing. They're characters. They turn into characters when you paint them, don't they? Yeah, blue jays. They're, yeah, they're beautiful. The little um, pointy head bit. Um, yeah. Yes, cats are pretty um, tough things with interesting expressions, very interesting expressions. Right, um, no, I need, I probably should put some more detail in the eyes and I, you know, those eyes feel a bit too high, I think. I'm gonna have to lower that eye down. I reckon they're a bit high. That's a problem when you, okay, so let, let me just do this, lower that a bit. Have to fix it. Yeah, that's better. That's better. I mean, this one's got to come down too. Nothing that can't be fixed, I say. It's interesting moving things around too. You know, that's that's a good thing you can do with oil paint. Oh, Carla Grace. I'll have to look her up. I wonder if I know who she is. Um, wow, yeah, that's good. So where are you? Are you your, I did actually watch your YouTube, um, your time-lapse one. That was really good, really well done. I like how you sort of talked at the beginning and then added music. That was really good. Um, I have troubles trying to have music <laughs> of all the things. Um, but beautiful painting, actually. It was really good. Oh, Canada, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, apparently, that's sort of like our sister, sister city, uh, sister. Continental something, um, something I think, a lot like Australia. Um, not to look at so much, but I think just lifestyle and that. Return, yeah, returning to painting. You don't know what you're doing with YouTube, to be honest. No. Well, me, t me neither. I would like, oops, I'd like to do, uh, see, I, I sort of, I think I'm favouring Twitch over YouTube um, now, I reckon, because I just, I sort of settled, settled in here, I seem to have, so, yeah. And I love this live. It's easy. It's much, much easier for me to do live than to um, to make videos and post them up. I found that really hard, really difficult. So I'm just using some half tones now. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, oh, that's good. It's a good pastime. It's better than watching TV, I reckon. Okay, so more, more detail. I need to get into the detail now. Detail.
It is great therapy. Yeah. Classes are good. With classes you um you you get to do things you, you haven't thought of, you know, you, different ways of doing it and um learning things. Yeah, it's pretty good. I enjoy it too. Because teaching's good too. Um so you have to pull apart all the stuff that you do as well. And then re rejig it into a lesson or something. Now I need to put a tiny bit of time there. So if I drag a bit over there a bit. Um what do I need to do those eyes? I'm just doing the wrong job. Mustn't avoid the eyes. That's for sure. Okay, so the eyes are the window to the soul, and they make a painting interesting. Oh. Not just interesting, but um, but kind of awesome. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I just chuck it on, but you know. Being fast, so I chuck it on and then worry about mistakes after. So then I go back and correct them. So pretty much my own method is to make a mess and then just fix it, fix it all up. So so I oops. So I kind of need to be fast so I get some weird things and unexpected marks happening that I can then use use to. Um, use to make it look interesting um you know so start fast and big with like start with a broom now who said that start with a broom and finish with a needle uh, a famous artist said that i can't remember who it was maybe matisse or someone like that said that and um yeah so yeah chuck it on at the beginning and then fix it, it nothing that can't be fixed I reckon. Uh, well, nearly. I mean, I'm always stuffing things up, I think. Uh, I'm going to put... I should wait till those eyes dry a bit and put a bit of time in there, but um, then I get impatient and I want to just put it in before it dries, which I shouldn't, but I will. I'm just playing with one colour too. That's... That helps with the speed um, because because it um, uh, um, what was I gonna say? It yeah, you don't have to think about color, so so it really does help with the speed. But it's hard painting and talking as well. <laughs> That's good for your brain, I think, painting and talking. Oh, Delacroix said that, did he? Yeah, okay. So start with a broom and finish with a needle or something. Is it a needle? <laughs> I, can't, I can't wait to put the white little highlights of specks in the eyes but I've got to I just gotta wait till that dries I've got to just wait for a minute or I'll be wiping out and putting it on and wiping out so to squint my eyes more yeah 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 that's right squint your eyes and also squint your eyes and then use a couple of fingers or something to block out parts of the 
whatever it is you're looking at that distract you, either your pain or the other one, like, or the image you're working from. So sometimes if there's something wrong with my pain and I can't work out what it is, I'll cover it and squint my eyes, cover the bit that's wrong, or I think is wrong, and then move whatever I've covered around a bit and cover other bits, and then just imagine how it should be, you know, where I've covered it. And that really helps me sort of see, um, see better what it is I need to fix or, or do with it. Yeah, that's what I do. That, that is a good way. Definitely squint those eyes. Mm. Okay, a bit more white in there. And wipe your brush a lot. Wipe your brush in between almost every mark. Uh, we'll clean this up in a minute. Something so yeah, okay. I can see, I can see. Bring that down a bit. Use my finger on this time. And that one. And that one. And Um, oh, yeah. Doing some mid tones now. Mid tones. Oh, last with this one. Uh, oh, sorry. And this gesso dries nice and flat, so it still looks okay, like like the canvas underneath poking through in parts. So I think it's gonna. I think it will be okay. Drop that a bit. Oh, now I need to wash this brush. Yeah. And put on, oh yeah, okay. Put on a bit, drop that a bit. Oh, just a little bit. And go darker again. Probably don't need to go too dark actually, but I can. It's just building it up slowly. Put that in that way. And that's which means I want to chisel up that face a little bit, I think. More white. Is that dry? And stepping back, yes. Stepping back a bit. Constantly. That bit of eye there. Little tweaks. Oh, now I might do this. And that one. Hmm. Dark. Back to the dark. Back to the dark side. Oh. Take it off, put it on, take it off. Oh. Use my finger a bit. What am I doing wrong? I haven't put any hair in yet. I mean, on the f coming down on the 
face. So that is some more dark in there now, I reckon. So I'll just probably should put some of this hair in. Some time through the hair. Drag, using a bit of a draggy thing. So that comes through there like that. So if I go that one, that one, that one, take a bit of mid toning here, here, for the ear, a bit lighter. And some of these highlights down here with the hair, so there's a highlight here that connects onto there. Where's my oh, I need another, another paintbrush. So now I've got four paintbrushes on the go. Here's an interesting thing, how the highlights go. Um, you know, they don't go with every strand, they kind of go opposite the grain and in clumps. So it's... Hmm. We got the hair going that way. Might do some hair going that way. What type of brushes do I prefer? Well, yeah, that's an interesting one. My the brushes I cannot do without would be just a, the flats, the the bright flats, which are the short bristled, straight across brushes in all shapes and all sizes. So they're the ones I would, if I was only going to have one brush, I'd have those in a few sizes. So, oh God, totally love these, um, these soft, bigger ones for a big brush. Um, but I love the hog hair ones, long handled hog hair ones for the smaller ones. And then um, ones I could do, like I like at the moment I like these but these are like a what would you call it like a um these are a fancy brush that I could live without but I love them these kind of round like you know they've got that round sort of short filberts I kind of like them because they give unexpected marks yeah I, I like the short ones because I can um I can scrub out with them and make straight lines with them. I can do everything with them, but, but they don't, you can't fill them up with paint, so they don't load up terribly well, and you can't make drips with them, with the short bristle brushes, no drips. Um, but they're just good for putting on and taking off. So they're, they're my favorites, you need, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you need, you need them. So start with them, and then the longer ones hold more paint, so they kind of almost do the same thing, but hold more paint, but you don't get as, you know, when you use them this way, you don't get as good sort of um, control and getting straight, definite strokes and marks and things. But they're, they're just, they're good too. So either of those are necessary brushes. Um, some more hair. She got hair everywhere. I don't have to do all the hair, but I'll do some of it because it does add to the story, I think. Um, and for that, that, yay, yay, no drips, no drips. No drips will disguise the drips. Um, 
I'm going to do that side of them. What am I going to do with that side over there? Maybe nothing. Uh, hmm. Um, maybe I'll hair, just hair in to that. Like that. So it looks like it's coming from behind there. There, I think. That will solve that problem. Okay, that, like that. Right. Uh, go up there. The big top knot. And a little highlight here. That's here. Soften that one there. That's crazy, crazy hair. <laughs> I might have overdone that hair a bit. Uh, I'll t I can t <laughs> I can tidy it up. I will. I'll tidy it up. It's bed hair. That's what it is. <laughs> okay, so I will just go around with some gesso. Oops. Damn, I spilled one. Go around with some straight gesso and tidy up a bit. Do some tidying. A little bit of tidying up of the of the mess. So I can see where. Um, okay. Um, same thing here, get rid of that, and some of that, and some of that. Just enough. To... And because this is gesso, it, um, um, Will look like the canvas underneath, which is good, and it will, should be nice to paint on after. I think. Well, it will be because it's just so. Get rid of that line there. Okay, get rid of that. That and that, and that and that. Um, I'm going to be the pout now, I've got to fix that pout. Yeah, it cleans it up, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it really does. So, um, oops. Yeah, and that's like how um, I love to paint. Uh, how's her mouth? I've got to fix her mouth. Okay, she's got this weird looking pet. Like, we don't want we no duck faces. No duck face. Don't want this duck face. Get rid of that. You try looking for good images, like, of it's so hard to get one, you know, that hasn't got this terrible pout or something. Like, it's really hard to. Fine, um, I'll go, well, maybe I won't be that bit, maybe that's what it is, to get that. Uh, uh, the, the pout. You don't want to pout. Um, 
have some half tones again. A bit of half tones now. Um, whoops, no, maybe, maybe more white actually. And the touch ups. And then the plan is to come back to this tomorrow, I reckon. And um, I'm going to really kind of try something interesting, pull it apart a bit with with another layer not pull it apart but add to it do something a little abstracty kind of a little expressive and yeah yeah touch ups then the last bit's touch ups She's okay, she looks, she's not exactly like she should be, but she's, it's close enough for, my, for me, for my liking at the moment, I think. Um, put that little bit there, put that there. Yeah, see, if I cover, if I squint and cover the bits up that aren't right, I can just see what's wrong with them. So that's what I do. It's like squint and cover that bit there. That bit that's wrong. It's making it a bit pouty. So I'll get rid of that. So try it at home. <laughs> try it. What shadow? Put too much on that. Then you get to this point and you don't want to undo what you've done because you have to re kind of do it again. A um, little bit of tone there. And what's on my brush? And into the ear. Because that ear is too bright. I need to take that back a bit. And put just make it a bit smaller too. A little bit smaller too, maybe. And just one colour. It's amazing what one colour can do. Um, it's amazing what a colour can do. The final touches. So you know you're not allowed to um, play music when you're live streaming. Did you know that? Because um, copyright and stuff like that. The first YouTube video I uploaded, I had smoke on the water <laughs> as my introduction sort of song. And it, and it, I got a, it got flagged for being, for using something I'm not supposed to use. And I thought, oh no, damn. Yeah, you can, yeah, you can, but, and, but, um, I don't even know how to do the music thing. Uh, like a, I think I need another kind of app for that, the music as well, to get the 
to get the music on on here so I've got the other camera on so I figured that one out but then to get the music on it's something else again I think and um, I haven't worked that one out yet but I've, I probably what I'm gonna do now I don't mind the, just the quiet the quiet with the voice and I'm when I've um yeah I know they do I, I think I know there's um there's a streaming um channel that has music made especially for trip streamers so this guy um just makes wrote music so streamers could use it and he like he made a fortune doing that um and it's just it's just kind of i don't even know if there's vocals in it or maybe he got got some musicians like not not very famous musicians or whatever to um to just make some music up so people can use it in streaming and he, he did really well with it which was a great idea what do you reckon? Well, I reckon. Hmm. I reckon that's pretty good. I reckon I'll just. So now the last thing I like to do is just check my edges, meaning where the I finish. Make sure they're nice. They look. They look pleasing. And um, just nice. And the highlight, which would be there, is a nice confident stroke as well as that one. So I want a really confident stroke there and probably there. And maybe a little one there. Maybe a little one. Oh, no, the mouse is okay, I think. I think I'm good. I think I'm good here. What is the time now? So it's 2.05, 2 o'clock. Well, that's good. So I went from nearly 1 to 2.05, so just over an hour, that's good. Oops. And I'll, I'll try and work on, 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 get on here again tomorrow, because I'm, this is fun, I do enjoy this, I like that other eye, which I feel like that eye needs to just go up a little bit. I do feel it needs to go up a little bit. So, doing a bit of painting myself today. Where to from here with the painting? Yeah, so I'll let it dry and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to go over it with oils. I So it's either this one or I'll grab them. Or one of these, or one of them, right? So one of them or that and I'm going to go over it with oils one of them i'm going to go over with um, a zorny kind of combination of oils in the skin colors and just section out a bit and paint it with some sort of skin tones one of them i want to glaze over in like another color glaze over in oils mean meaning put a thin transparent kind of 
glaze over it in parts, white bits back and put in more detail just with the oils in maybe one or two colours. And so I'll so and then see what happens with them. So it's a bit of an experiment as well. Um so yeah, so that's that's the plan. So so I'm gonna add to them. But I wanted I wanted a few to try a few different things with so it might be interesting and fun to to you know check that out too. It be, it, well, it'll be fun for me and um, something different because I I don't like doing the same thing all the time. So I'm always trying different things, you know, as you do, and um, keeps me out of mischief. <laughs> Touching up the nerves. Touch up the nose a little bit. Oh. Yeah. Mm. There's a nice little tongue on to there. Mm -hmm. You always see things um, that you miss oh, after. Whoops. I'll um, just put in that last bit and I'll just do, I'll just bring it up close. I will bring it up close and then I will say goodbye for the day and go and do some other what do I still have to do? What else? Oh, well, you know, dinner and all and all this stuff like that. Daily housework stuff. Hang out some more washing. I fed the chickens. How are the chickens going? <laughs> Little chickies? Getting a few eggs every day. There we go, that's better I think. Better. Chickens are so funny. I've let them out today and they, they have a little roam around and um, have a little scratch. I give them a little scratch. You know, they like a bit of a scratch and they're very, they're part of the family. And then they just die, don't they? Yeah, they're great. They are great. No, I love them. Love them, little things. Little funny things that they are. Right. Well, I reckon that's it. Oh, one more touch up. If I keep looking at this, I'll keep doing stuff. And, and that's how it is. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna um yeah, silly puppy. They just die just one day they're just sitting there and then they kind of they look like they've got dementia or something and they um they look a bit stunned and, and they just sit down and then the next day you go in there they're dead. But you can kind of tell oh I've had one that looked like it was gonna die and then it then it was alright for a while. But yeah, I don't know. So I'm gonna just go I'm going to do this this time. Yeah. Bring it right in there so I can see it. See her. See the messiness. Oh, look at that. <laughs> mm. Stay 
tuned and um, not stay tuned, but I'll um, might see you tomorrow or the next day, and I'll continue continue with the program. Hey, no worries. Thanks for thanks for joining in and um, thanks for the chat and all of that. It's made it much more fun. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Goodbye. Enjoy the rest of the day.